Sarah. Please stand and join us in singing our opening song, He is Exalted. everybody. This rainy kind of day is an Irish day. My childhood, I kind of remember all the days were like that. So welcome here on this rainy day. Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let's bow our heads to ask God to forgive any sins we remember. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. It's the Easter season, and I know God sprinkled you already on the way to church, but we have the sprinkling to remind you of your baptism during the Gloria. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth
May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you now so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone commits sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep the commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfect in him. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, the two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified. And though that they were seeing a ghost, then he said to them, Why are you troubled? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see, I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked bread, baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. 
you are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Is he real? Is he real? That's the question Luke is dealing with in this story of Jesus' appearance. They probably saw him dying or dead on the cross. Now, three days later, he's walking around. Is he real? They even said they thought he was a ghost. They were so terrified. So they checked him out to see if he was real. And you know in tradition, it's not in the Bible, but tradition says that Luke was a doctor. And what would Luke do in telling this story? In those days, they had them touch Jesus. So Jesus says, touch me. Look at my wounds. And as if that wasn't enough to show he was real, and Jesus probably saw their faces wondering, and he says, give me something to eat. Give me something to eat. I suppose a modern day doctor, or any of us, if someone, we'd want to see what's the temperature of this body, you know, the person we saw dead. Do they have a pulse? But Luke is showing that Jesus is real. And probably what's more important in this gospel passage is what Jesus goes on to talk about. He talks about sin, repentance, and forgiveness. Now, sin is a tough topic. Um, you know, in the Bible, we have all sorts of people confessing to be sin. St. Paul said, I'm the chief of sinners. I'm the chief of sinners. Isaiah said, I sin with my mouth. Was he a gossip? Did he cuss people out? Did he lie? Doesn't say. And the story of the hundred sheep when one was lost and they went out and found him. And there's more rejoicing in heaven over someone who is found, someone who repents, someone who comes back to God from a place of sinfulness. Now, I've met people who said, I never sinned, Father. I don't have to go to confession. I'm jealous. <laughs> I never sinned, they say, and I don't relate to it, but I don't argue. It's, but I think the gospel stories, you know, from John the Baptist crying out, repent, should get us to look at, you know, are we sinners? And what our own pe family, the people who love us, say to us, will often give us a little clue about our lack of perfection. You know, sin is breaking commandments, not doing what God wants. But in a simple kind of way, sin is choosing the darkness. Choosing the darkness. It's like when we sometimes realize, oh my God, I said something at dinner last night. I wished I hadn't said it. And we realize we chose the darkness instead of the light. But what's most important for us, if we have a sense of sin, is that we can come for repentance. And repentance is more than saying, I'm sorry. I mean, if you dented your car or got a flat tire this morning, I say, oh, I'm sorry. But it doesn't mean I'm repenting about your, I didn't do your flat tire. Repentance is more than being sorry. In, in English, when we say, I'm sorry, it's really maybe not enough. And I know teachers, I remember a teacher saying, the kid said, oh, I'm sorry. And the teacher said, what are you sorry for? Great question. But for us mature people, if we hurt somebody, maybe better than saying I'm sorry is to say, forgive me. Forgive me. There's a confession in that, isn't there? confession that I know I did something wrong. Forgive me. And repentance then comes 
to forgiveness in what Jesus said today. And we Catholics, we're big into forgiveness. We start the Mass off with Lord of Mercy. We go to confession and all those sorts of things, asking God to forgive us. We understand forgiveness. The last parish I was in, there was a temple in Woodland Hills, St. Bernadine. There was a Jewish temple next door. And we try to have a good interfaith relationship, and we did things together. But one of the things, and I've told this story, forgive me if you've heard it before, but I've told this story, I'm sorry if you've heard it before. No, forgive me if you've heard it. <laughs> but we would, I would go, the rabbi would come to one of our masses and talk, and I'd go the following Friday to the temple and talk about the same topic. So one time, over the many years we were together, we picked the topic of forgiveness. And the rabbi came over, and there was hundreds of people in church, and he's talking about the Jewish perspective on forgiveness. Now, you have to remember that the rabbi would also joke that if you have two rabbis, you'll have three opinions. So they, that's one of their jokes. And so you'll have many different Jewish people with different ideas. But this rabbi said to us, we don't have to forgive anyone unless they ask. I had people leaving church afterwards and they were saying, hey, Father, I like kind of the Jewish way of it. That's kind of cool. But it blew my mind. I'd never heard that before. And the following Friday, of course, I have to get my thoughts together to talk to the Jewish congregation. And I was thinking so much about what he had said. And it was a lot of thoughts he gave. But what I realized is that in our spiritual tradition, we have to forgive someone else. Not necessarily because they ask or they want it or need it or they care. We have to forgive them because we need for ourselves to let it go. For our spiritual growth, we don't want to go through life carrying grudges and vengeance. And that's forgiveness for us. And God truly forgives us, you know, for any sins we've done. And our church, you know, over the years, even when I was a young priest, there was a, an unspoken attitude towards unmarried mothers and divorced people that made them second-class Catholics and our church, and if I could speak for the church, I would ask for forgiveness for that. And today we continue to, with gay people, and with, I don't know what the other ways we do it, but we're not always the charitable, kind, forgiving church that we need to be, that God calls us to be. And it changes, not at the bishop's office, not with my sermon, <coughs> It changes inside in us, each one of us today. We choose to see our sin, to ask for forgiveness, and to repent, to try and give up the sin and change. You all know about Mahatma Gandhi. Back in, I think, 1948 or something in India, he got into politics, nonviolent politics, and ended up liberating the country. But he went to London to study. And while he was in study in London, he was exposed to Christianity. And he was very impressed by the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, 6, and 7. He thought, this Christianity is a pretty cool religion. And he was very positive about Christianity. Then he went back to India, and he lived with a Christian couple and in East India for some time. And when he was living with the Christian couple, he realized God did not become man in that house. God was not alive in that Christian house. Today's gospel challenges us. Is he alive here?
We skip the creed today and do your baptism of promises. Do you renounce Satan and all his works? Do you renounce the father of evil and the father of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, suffered, and died for us, and rose from the dead? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body? This is our faith. This is the faith of us as church. We're proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. And may Almighty God bless each one of us with a deep faith that guides our lives. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Remain standing for the petitions. For the church, that the Spirit will open our minds to understand the scriptures and empower us to share the message of God's love and forgiveness with all whom we encounter, we pray. For all government leaders and civil authorities, may the gift of peace be every present among us to their role as peacemakers in the world, in the families, and in the communities, we pray. For our neophytes, those newly joined to Christ through baptism, those called to him through the sacraments of initiation, may their witness of new life in God bring fresh enthusiasm and joy to every Christian, we pray. For a deeper understanding of Christ's presence among us, that we who gather in his name learn to acknowledge his presence to, in one another, giving us strength to live as he commanded, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are broken and wounded, that they may find healing in Christ, and that God will help us recognize them as our brothers and sisters, through their woundedness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the homebound, and for all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit, including Dan Young, Brian Sullivan, John Paul Wong, Maria Wong, Amelia Katzin, Serna and Gadea family, that the risen Lord may dispel their darkness for those gone before us in death, including J.B. Yap, Ana de la Ripa Bustos, and La Arne Unto, that they and all sleep in Christ may enjoy light, happiness, and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Pat Gowley, Denise Gowley, and George Leslie Gowley, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. for our own needs and intentions that we now recall in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, these are our prayers today. Tomorrow there will be others. Please hear them all and guide us on this life's journey through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare our table, please join us in singing You Alone.
my sisters and brothers, pray that these gifts will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you've given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We believe good and the Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now we pray to our loving Father together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away our sins. Blessed are we who are called to this supper. Lord, I am not worthy to be spent on the marriage. I only say the word, my foes.
please join us in singing our communion hymn, I Will Choose Christ. couple of announcements. Today is the blood drive. 
You can, it, the best thing is if you can make an appointment online and St. John Hughes is the code to enter. But you can probably chance walking in and it's over in Montel Hall on the far corner of the lot. Thank you for supporting our Call to Renew campaign. We've reached 35% of our goal. If you have any questions, there's a representative in the vestibule. And the classes, English as a Second Language, continue to be offered every Saturday from 9 to noon in room AB, the big room at the end of Grill Hall. Three levels of proficiency are taught, and the only cost is the cost of the book, <coughs> the price of which is actually subsidized by the Men's Council. Nice to have Deacon Nestor with us today, and all of those of you who have joined us online Staying out of this rain might be a good idea. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless each one of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And as we go forth, please join us in singing, Go Make a Difference. <laughs>